I suspect this project could get massive adoption very soon, especially from software developers. The potential here is actually pretty big, despite being a really simple idea at its core. The company that created this thing was founded by two former Docker employees, and it aims to manage large language models similar to the way that Docker manages container images. Docker images are for creating application containers that you can deploy, and large language models are, of course, for even more useful things, like simulating conversations between Socrates and Snoop Dogg. Those seem like two very different things, so what the heck do large language models have in common with Docker images, and why would we attempt to treat them the same way? You might be surprised at the answer, and I think this might go down as one of the most important open source projects of the year. This video isn't sponsored or anything, by the way, I just think this is gonna be a really influential project. It isn't written in Rust, sorry about that, but don't worry, you can integrate it with your Rust application if you want to. The Olama project achieves several distinct but related things, all of which are pretty valuable in isolation, but they become even more so because they're all packaged into one project. I'm gonna show you all these things in this video. First of all, it has a very simple command line interface for running and interacting with language models. That's not exactly a groundbreaking feature on its own, but it's just the beginning. Second, it provides a simple HTTP interface that other applications can use to prompt the language models that it's hosting. That can really lift the burden of having to load and manage language models off of the applications that need to use them. And it also allows for language model inferences to be done on a remote machine instead of locally if you want to. Third, it gives us an automated way of downloading and managing language models, kind of like a package manager. And then fourth, this is the really interesting thing. It lets you create new models based on existing models using a concept of templates. This is the part that gets me really excited and we'll cover it more toward the end of the video. The basic idea behind Olama is that there's a server that both exposes HTTP APIs, loads language models, and carries out inferences using those models. I can do olama serve, and my server's running. One thing you can do once you have the server running is connect to it and start prompting it right from the command line, which you can actually do with the same binary that you use to run the server. But instead of olama serve, we're gonna do olama run llama2. So I'm gonna do olama run llama2. The first time you do this, it'll automatically download the model. This is the part that will really remind you of Docker if you've used it. Once the model is downloaded, I can have a full blown chat with it just like I would with ChatGPT or something like that. Again, this is all running locally on my computer. So I can do what advice would Noop Dog give Socrates. Nice, just roll with it, that's good advice. Life's too short to get bogged down by haters, isn't that the truth? I think I need to censor part of this before I post it. I mentioned that Olama exposes some HTTP APIs that allow any application to integrate with it. These APIs are about as simple as it gets, and if you wanna integrate an application with Olama, probably the one you're gonna be interested in is Generate. We have an example of calling Generate here, and I'll just copy and paste that in the, into the terminal, and we'll see what happens. So I get a bunch of JSON, and this is a list of JSON objects, and each of these objects has one of the tokens of the response in it. So this looks pretty verbose when you do it on the command line, but obviously if you're integrating this into your application, that's not really gonna be an issue. You can see each of these JSON objects has a response key with a token in it, and so you just concatenate those all together if you were integrating this into your application. Pretty straightforward. And then at the end, the last JSON object has some statistics on the inference that you can use if you want to. Of course, there are a bunch of other APIs too, most of which revolve around the creation and management of the models themselves. Okay, so given these APIs, what has the community already done with these? Well, there's a list of integrations at the bottom of the readme.md file on the Olama GitHub repository. I'm gonna show you three of my favorite integrations, and one of them actually isn't even listed here yet, at least at the time I'm making this video. For many folks, the most powerful use case for Olama and language models in general will be extracting information from some kind of knowledge base. There is an Olama plugin for Obsidian for doing just that. Obsidian is one of the most popular note-taking apps, especially amongst the more technically inclined crowd that software developers are part of. With this plugin installed, we get some really useful commands out of the box. We can just highlight some text and ask it for a summary and it'll give, give us a summary of the text. Obviously this is a small piece of text, so we can have it create bullet points. Yeah, you get the idea. One really cool feature is that you can actually jump into settings and create your own custom commands. All you have to do is specify a command name and a prompt, and then you specify the model that you wanna use, and you can do add command. So I'm gonna create a new command called Shakespeareize, and this is going to rewrite whatever the selection is in the style of Shakespeare. Rewrite the text in the style of Shakespeare. And we're gonna do llama2, and we're gonna do add command. So now we have our new Shakespeareize command. Let's uh, try that out. Delete these bullet points, llama 
Shakespeare eyes. Nice. So I rewrote our science fiction story in the style of Shakespeare. So the possibilities here are pretty endless. One other cool thing is that you can actually configure where the plugin is connecting to Olama. So if you want to, you can actually have Olama running on a completely separate machine. Maybe you have like a beefy machine with a GPU in the closet and you're, you have a tiny laptop in your lap and you have Obsidian running on your laptop. You can specify the name of your Olama host in this field here. So that is the Obsidian Olama integration. This next integration, I'm not gonna go into too deeply because David of the fantastic channel Dev on Duty actually wrote a NeoVim plugin for integrating with Olama called gen.nvim. And he actually did a full video on it that I'll have a link to in the description, but I'm just gonna show you the basic idea. So I can pop up this menu here. I can ask it arbitrary things. So I can do one and then generate a Python program that shows a mat plot lib chart of random numbers. That looks like it might work. All right, there we go. That looks reasonable. Let's say plot of some random numbers. So that's a code generation example. We can also have it do arbitrary code reviews. So I'm gonna highlight the entire document, pop open the menu, do 11 for review code, and it's gonna give me some suggestions. Some of these might not be accurate because it doesn't have the context of the full project, but you get the idea. You can get quick kind of code review suggestions. There is an Emacs integration called Elama that kind of has a similar approach. I can have any sort of buffer open and use Elama ask about to ask it a question about that buffer. And it'll automatically prompt the language model, including the contents of the buffer as the context for the question. That's pretty nice. So let's try that. Elama ask about, and then I'm gonna ask it, what does this do? So again, it's gonna automatically include the contents of the buffer in the prompt to the language model. So I should get an explanation for what this Go file is doing. So yeah, it's giving me an explanation of what's going on here. And then I can actually ask it follow-up questions. If I do Elama ask, what would be a slightly more complex Go program, I don't know. And it's gonna give me, yeah, summing some digits. So kind of a similar idea to gen.nvim, but in Emacs, it gives you a really quick way to use the contents of the current buffer as part of the context for your prompt to the language model. So that is the Emacs Olam integration. I mentioned in the beginning that Olama treats language models a bit like Docker images, so much so that it even has a concept of model file which of course is an analog to Dockerfile in the Docker universe. Modelfile serves a purpose very similar to Dockerfile in that it allows you to create a new language model based on an existing language model with the modifications that you specify in the file. We're gonna take this example from the readme and kind of build on it a bit. So we'll copy this over. We've created a file called Modelfile and we're gonna paste in this example. Let's break down this example real quick. The first line is from Llama 2, and that means the model that we're creating is going to use Llama 2 as its base, and everything that comes after that is going to be basically modifications to the base Llama 2 model. The next line is parameter temperature 1, and parameter allows you to kind of adjust these tuning knobs that Olama exposes to you, temperature being one of them, and temperature specifies how creative the model is going to be. The default is actually 0.8, and higher numbers mean more creativity, so our new model is gonna be slightly more creative than the default. The system prompt is actually part of a broader concept of templates that I'm not gonna go into in this video, but essentially what it allows you to do is specify some context that you wanna feed into the language model in addition to the user's prompt. And in doing so, you can kinda of adjust what the language model's response is going to be. So in the example they give, it says, you are Mario from Super Mario Brothers, answer is Mario. So, the language model is going to respond as if it's Mario, even though the user doesn't explicitly say act as Mario in their prompt. We're gonna do something a little different. So now that we have our modifier written, we can actually create a new model on the command line using Olama create. Olama create, and then the name that we wanna give our model, we'll do angry rotation, and then we'll specify the file. So dash F and then model file. Cool, now our new model is created, let's try running it. Should I use Java for my next project? Yep, that's exactly what we're looking for. And of course we can list what models we have installed by using olama list command. We can see our new model at the top here. Up to this point, we've either been directly using or basing our models off of ones that are already in the olama model repository. What if there's one we got from somewhere else that we'd like to import as an olama model? 
Well, in the model file, you can specify a GGUF file on disk. So if I go into Hugging Face and I find a model in the GGUF format that I'd like to try, I can go ahead and download that GGUF file, and then I can specify that at the top of my model file. So instead of from llama2, I can actually specify a path on disk. So I'm gonna do from dot slash and then the file name. And of course, that's gonna base everything I have in the model file on the model in that GGUF file. So now that I've made that change, I can do olama creates augmental and then specify the model file again. And then I'll do olama run augmental, prompt it with is there love in space. Now we're interacting with a model that we just downloaded off of Hugging Face. That's Olama. Maybe in the future, more things will start adopting the Dockerfile approach. Maybe someday we'll be making meals via Dockerfile syntax. Seriously though, I think we're just at the very beginning of all the cool Olama integrations that we're going to see. Let me know in the comments what you think of Olama. Are you going to be canceling your ChatGPT subscription? What are some other Olama integrations that you'd like to see? If you are interested in large language models and what you can do with them, definitely check out this other video where I built a web-based chatbot using only Rust on both the front end and the back end. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.